to Attention Duelist, the uh, show where we get you up to date with the latest and greatest in all things Yu-Gi-Oh! For those of you watching on YouTube, allow me to give you a lovely little disclaimer right here, right now. This show is recorded live in front of a Twitch audience on a Tuesday at 7pm GMT, so all news that we cover is relevant at the time it's done and usually worded in a way that should be okay for YouTube when it's released on a Friday. So recorded in front of a live audience, say hi live audience, on a Tuesday and then upload to audience. YouTube on Friday. Hi, live audience. Yeah, there you go. There you go. If any of you comment about how this information is outdated, you are obligated to click the Twitch link and then follow and then tune in when it's actually happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lots to get into. So how about we get into Attention Duels and take us straight over to Master Duel, one of our favorite things to cover here on the channel because Master Duel players are currently able to enter two codes in Master Duel to receive both card sleeves and a player icon themed around the released Yu-Gi-Oh! Chronicles animation. If you enter the appropriate codes, either YGO25MD or YGO25DL into Master Duel, you'll be able to claim your free icon and sleeves. And may I say, those sleeves look spicy. Albaz Lore! Albaz Lore! Stays winning! I know, all, right? All the Lore aficionados, they could have picked any of them, but they picked this one! Let's go! Let's go! I'm so happy about it. I'm so, I'm so ecstatic. So happy for it. They are awesome looking card sleeves. So, uh, so good. YGO 25 MD and YGO 25 DL, all in capitals, everybody. Mm -hmm. Do it now, right now. I actually haven't done it yet, so I really should, because I want those sleeves. Those sleeves are, pr those are some of the best sleeves they've done. And, and while I feel very fulfilled right now, I do hope that this is a sign to come where we'll get to see a bunch of the other Animation Chronicles get turned into accessories. Uh, I would love to see, like, the Zeus one. That would be pretty sick. Moving on with Master Duel, however, we also got the new Secret Pack. Last week, we saw the release of the Return of the King Selection Pack, but alongside it came the Secret Pack Songstress of Sorrow Song. This set combines Tier Limits and Mermail cards into one set, making it easier to build a Tier Limits deck. Players who log in now can get a free pull from the set in case you haven't claimed yours yet. So hop on Master Duel and see if you can pull something spicy. I don't know if I've done this pull. Uh, same here. I am definitely looking to um, crack it open, then maybe get a free UR because I need some dust. Yeah, I'm dusting anything I get from that pack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, now, now, are you dusting it because you don't care for them or because you already have them? Because I hate them. Okay, yeah. I have a gripe, so I would kill them. I would rather little, not pull uh, anything. A little too powerful, a little too oppressive. They weren't, a f you know, but then I think about the Snake Eyes format we've gotten to, and sometimes I look back and think maybe Talimunts weren't so bad. The unfortunate thing is that I think both of them are equally as oppressive for the game, but Tier Limits let players do some cool nonsense with fusions. Fire King or Snake Eyes is either it or Fire King, and that's it. It, it is not the most stellar of it at all. Master Duel has some new accessories to go alongside the return of the King Selection Pack. For just 250 gems, you can get yourself a red Dragon Archfiend wallpaper, and for 100 gems, you can get a Tier Laments per Legia card sleeves. Both are available through the in-game store right now. He's my boy! He's my boy! He's the big old boy! He's my boy! It's just, my you boy! Open up, you open up Master Duel... Red Dragon Archfiend comes to greet you. Hey, Doom, how's it going? You having a rough day today? Remember that time you summoned me in a duel and then it got weird? I remember. Yeah, did, I need that. I yeah. need that to be... I actually do just need to buy that, don't I? My Master Duel should not have blue eyes as its background. It should have this. This should be no. my Master Duel background. A Red Demon's Dragon is ready for it to get a little weirder now, so... You know, I'll top on that. I will soon have him. We love the Red Dragon Arch Fiend Boy. I know, it's actually a crime that this is not my background on uh, Master Duel. It's fucked up. I am fully aware. Uh, these are also cute sleeves. Uh, I know they're tail elements, which we all hate, so you might not want them, but they're cute. They're pretty cute. They, they use the field spell that has some actual personality to it. Yeah, you know, mermaids freed from the clutches of the King of Sorrow. <laughs> Moving on with our Master Duel, the Legacy Packs have had three new cards being introduced to them. Here are your three new cards. You got Behemoth, the King of a Hundred Battles, Magician of Faithfulness, something I don't get along with, and Ultimate Meat Offering. <laughs> I can't wait to get the Meat Offering. Ultimate Meat Offering. I thought I typoed <laughs> that just then, but no. <laughs> that is the card. 
<laughs> no, nope, that's just it. I love reference cards. It's so funny. All right, you so, ready for the long reading where you tell us what these cards do and why we should like them? You bet I am. Behemoth, the king of 100 battles, is a level 10 Earth Beast monster with 2,700 attack and 1,500 defense. You can tribute summon this card by tributing one monster. This card is unaffected by the activated effects of special summoned monsters if it was normal summoned or set. If this card is normal summoned or special summoned, you can target a beast, beast warrior, or winged beast monster in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. And if you do, this card loses 700 attack. Once per turn during the end phase, you can make this card gain 700 attack. What it's a not... beefy boy. Yeah, it's not particularly useful for a established archetype or strategy, but if you do like playing the tri-type decks, this is a great one tribute monster that is a towers against a bunch of special summoned ones, and the longer it stays on the field, the bigger it's going to get. If you choose not to get a card back with it, you're ending your turn with a 3400 attack monster. I I question if you'll be able to summon something that gets over that. He's so that? proud of himself. Look at that guy. He's smug as all shit. Look at they him. They should be. They They've won 100 battles! 100 battles is a lot of battles! Mm-hmm. Whole lot of battles. Next up, we have Magician of Faithfulness, a level 5 light spellcaster flip monster with 600 attack and 800 defense. Its flip effect has you targeting a spell card in your graveyard and adding it to your hand. Then you can special summon a Magician of Faith or Magician of Faithfulness from your deck and face down defense position. You can only use this effect of the card once per turn. This basically allows you to chain multiple copies of these together. As long as you can set one faithfulness, you can flip into another. Hopefully it doesn't flip again later, but if your opponent has more attacks, you can set original Magician of Faith and then get its effect because that way you're playing around the hard ones per turn. And now you have two spell cards. That's right. It's not ultimate offering. It's ultimate offering. A continuous trap card that, during your main phase, lets you pay a thousand life points to conduct up to three normal summons or sets this turn, not just one. During your opponent's battle phase, you can pay 500 life points to, immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon a monster. You can only use each effect of this card once per turn. Now, if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh! for a long, long time, you'll remember that the original Ultimate Offering is a very powerful card. It effectively lets you play Rush Duels all the way back into the beginning of the game for just 500 life points of free normal summon. Ultimate Offering basically does the same thing. It just puts a hard cap on what you can do. Uh, paying for that 1,000 is effectively getting two more normal summons, like how it would happen back in the day. And being able to normal summon during your opponent's battle phase was also a thing Ultimate Offering let you do. So this is just kind of a modern version that lets you not go into wild, wacky gadget loops, uh, but still could see some play out of nowhere. So there you go. Those are the three new cards added to Legacy Packs. We all got those Legacy Packs we haven't opened, so you might be able to pull yourself some of these cards, you know? You might be able to. I mean, you're earning them anyway. You might as well crack them open. They're not doing nothing for you sitting around your inventory. I got like 300 or something of them, dude. The next Duelist Cup has been announced. The first stage of this two-part event will take place between March 12th to March 24th. Players will need to duel against other players to increase their duel rank until they reach duel level max, which will then get them entry into stage two. Stage two will be taking place March 21st or March 24th. During the second stage, players will be earning DP, with those scoring the highest winning the event. Rewards are yet to be confirmed, but if you want to test your dueling prowess, then take part in the next Duelist Cup. Yeah, so uh, get ready to lose some sleep that weekend if you want to aim for the top because this is easily the most unhealthy event in the game. <laughs> Holy cow. I have seen far too many people basically non-stop streaming from the like three-day weekend that you end up getting, you know? Yeah, I could I could never do that. That is outrageous. No, no absolutely Holy not. Cow. Buying a lot of energy drinks. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna use code Doom twenty at Wraith, get yourself a bunch of energy, and then you're gonna just play against Snake Eyes for three days straight. You're welcome. Isn't that fun? So fun. Aren't you enjoying yourself? So fun. That's how I love to play Yu-Gi-Oh! is that way being mm -hmm, forced mm -hmm. to play against the strongest decks imaginable. For those of you who are not familiar, yeah, there's no cap on how many times you get to play in this event. You're not given like 20 tickets to get 20 tries and see how many points you can get out of that. No, you are incentivized to log in on the 21st, sleep for like four hours over the course of the entire event because 
it doesn't matter how good you are if you can put in more hours than other people over time you will just win and that takes us over to the tcg oh my god we're never gonna predict what happens here oh my goodness what deck came out on top uh, last weekend ycs sydney happened in accor stadium of the top 16 decks are you ready for this fam are you ready uh seven were fire king snake eyes four were just snake eyes two were kashtira one flow under his deck one voiceless voice deck and one pearly deck of the top eight it was entirely snake eyes with four decks being fire king snake eyes and four just being pure snake eyes and then guys the top two unsurprised surprisingly ended with snake eyes versus snake eyes and to everyone's surprise snake eyes won each event is just continuing to show this tier zero meta looks like it's sticking around for a while however let's give a big congrats to the event winner jason huang who uh won the whole event we hope that you know this win helps you recover the wallet damage that you had for building snake eyes <laughs> Mm, Snake Eyes won, guys. What do you mean? This is wow. so, this is so unsurprising. So unsurprising. Yeah. Snake, yeah. Eyes. No. Snake Eyes. <laughs> Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes. Look, look. There's some other decks there. Phantom Knights was played, and they made it to the top 32. Wow. Shark. Hey, that was me. That was you. That was me getting. Yeah, the Phantom Knights. That's me. Oh, I mean, that was my spirit. That was my ghostly ah. presence pushing them to victory. But that was kind of me. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said, like, let's take a second to acknowledge some of the top 32 there. Despia, Salomon Great, Vanquish Soul, Shark, Phantom Knights. That's, okay, that's actually the best one out of there. Shark, good job. Bringing it home for the Barians. Whoever played Shark, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Obviously, we're still stuck in this tier zero meta where it's just Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes. Yeah, Snake Eyes is getting a little bit tedious. When are we going to start breaking out the image from Nightmare Before Christmas? Where Oogie Boogie is rolling the dice and he just goes, Snake Eyes! And he just throws the table over. Oh my god, that's literally Yu-Gi-Oh now. <laughs> that's what we all are. Yep, that's, uh, unfortunately, when I have to announce YCS stuff, that's, that's what I got to say. Snake Eyes versus Snake Eyes. Please expect these to get more sarcastic the more I have to write. Snake Eyes versus Snake Eyes versus Snake Eyes. The more I have to say it, the more angry I get. This tier zero meta, we need a balanced update. We need a hit to Snake Eyes, dude. We need it. The fact that we haven't gotten an emergency list with these results right now is, uh, I'm losing my mind. Yep. It's a fun time to be a Yu-Gi-Oh player in the TCG where Snake Eyes is just absolutely dominating. Uh, but don't worry, guys. There's some cool stuff for those Snake Eyes players of you that will be able to earn the OTS packs. Um... That's right, Doom. A new OTS pack has been confirmed in OTS Pack 25, which has revealed its first ultimate rare only obtainable in it. Exodia the Forbidden One will be one of the three ultimate rares to be featured. This pack should be hitting stores around June 12th, so take part in some OTS store tournaments to see if you can pull the ultimate version of Exodia, the Forbidden One! Alright, be real with me. Do you like Exodia and Ultimate Rare? Because I'm not so convinced by this picture. I think the lighting on this one is terrible. Okay. Uh, it looks like every scan that I see on places like Yugipedia, uh, where they just take like a photo of the card. Um and they don't do any like image process well image processing makes it sound fake but like they it's just too dark i think we need a better like gain on it to get the real details because i'm sure once we get that it's going to look phenomenal okay okay yeah this picture is not selling me on it yeah no i, I agree with you this picture uh bad flat i'm hoping like in actuality it looks way better I really want Exodia, like the ultimate version of Exodia. Like, I want this card, but I'm just like, I fucking hate how you look right now, dude. <laughs> He's got very uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog energy. He's so angsty. He's very much Uncle Ned. And what is with the Exodia love lately? Like, them just throwing Exodia into the OTS pack. Like, you want it, right? And I'm like, yes, casual players want Exodia, and casual players aren't playing to get an OTS pack. Uh, they've got to reprint all the pieces because that new uh, core set, Infinite Forbidden, has a big Exodia theme to it. So you got to make sure all the Forbidden One pieces are available. But only now, one of them in ulti, and that's really annoying. There's nothing more satisfying than having all of Exodia in the same printing. If you really want to impress me, pull out a Legend of Blue Eyes first edition set of Exodia. You pull that out in front of me, and I'll be like, oh, shit, you're cool, bro. Yeah, that, that's unbeatable. That's that's yeah. the true collect collection power. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm like that. That shit. That shit. Like absolutely spicy. That's a that's a way to get a conversation and a hangout time with Doom right there. Just all five Legend of Blue Eyes first edition pieces of Exodia. Oh, beautiful. That's gonna have to boop us over to OCG though. But be in, in mind, like these cards will be coming to OCG and TCG pretty close together. So new dad is here. Oh, new dad. New dad. New dad. New dad. New dad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it is. Infinite Forbidden, the set which will be releasing in the OCG on April 27th and the TCG on July 18th, has had even more cards revealed with the new archetype, Fiend Smith. The Fiend Smith is a level 6 Light Fiend monster with 1800 attack and 2400 defense. You can discard this card to add a Fiend Smith Speller Trap card from your deck to your hand. You can target a Fiend Smith Equip card you control and a monster on the field to send them to the graveyard. If this card is in your grave, you can shuffle one other Light Fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck or extra deck to special summon this card. Nova. Nova. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is this card kind of sexy? Because it's Dante from Devil May Cry if you did a fusion with Axel from Kingdom Hearts. Oh my god, it is! It is! <gasps> it, it is! It mm -hmm. I love both it's... these things! Oh my god. It's a match made in heaven. It, it's just, oh my god, so beautiful. Oh, fuck. It is kind of sexy, though, right? No, kind of. That's an understatement. <laughs> okay, because the you get <laughs> Doom's a simp. I never deny it. <laughs> never <laughs> embrace what? it. Embra you know how Zach says in, like, Crisis Core and that? He's like, whatever you do, embrace your dreams and protect your honor as soldier. It's more like embrace your dreams and protect your honor as a simp for me. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I get this in real life, if I hold it in like my opening hand, my thumb is always going to be running across the inner lining of that jacket so I can get some of those rippling abs because mm. I can't unsee Axel now. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ax Ax Axel's got some like good energy to him. I, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be upset having him around. I got an Axel tattoo. Yeah, see? Yeah, no, I'm a big Axel fan. Big Axel fan. Does my eyes, oh, are my eyes giving me away as I'm like peering at the card. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, tracking! <laughs> Good All thing right. we don't have well, an eye tracker over here at Attention Duelist. No. All right, well, make sure to keep that memorized as we go into the next one. Fiend Smith Lacrimosa is a level 6 Light Fiend fusion monster, 2400 attack and defense. It requires two Light Fiend monsters as fusion material. And if this card is fusion summoned, you can target a light fiend monster in your graveyard or banishment and either add it to your hand or special summon it. While on the field, monsters your opponent controls lose 600 attack. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your graveyard into your deck or extra deck to inflict 1200 damage to your opponent. Spicy, spicy. Banishment mentioned. I know, banishment is mentioned. This is a cool archetype. I'm liking it so far. I kind of want to play it, and it's not just because it's a sexy man, okay? It's, aside from the great aesthetics, uh, the cards actually do seem pretty powerful, and and speaking of powerful, cool cards, let's take a look at this card's evolution. Fiend Smith Deus Ray is a level 9 light fiend fusion monster with 2800 attack and 2400 defense, requiring the Fiend Smith specifically and two other light fiend monsters as fusion material. As a quick effect, you can negate the effects of a number of face up cards on the field until the end of the turn, up to the total link rating of the link monsters equipped to this card as equip cards. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle one other Light Fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck or extra deck, then target a card on the field and send it to the grave. I like this man. Can we be friends with this man? Oh, I think you're already friends with this man. I want to this be friends with him. Works, it basically works like Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. It has that thing where it can like negate a card on the field at a quick effect. I just, it's pretty. Nova, it's just pretty. Very pretty. Super pretty. Yeah. And other things too. Wink! He got horns now. And moving on from our current horniest monster, <laughs> it's time to a big ol' coffin. It's time for Fiend Smith Requiem, a Link 1 Light Fiend Link monster with 600 attack, requiring any Light Fiend monster as material. 
You can only special summon a copy of this card once per turn. And during the main phase, as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to special summon a Fiend Smith monster from your hand or deck. You can target a non-link Light Fiend monster you control and equip this card from your field or grave to that target as an equip spell that gives it 600 attack. I only just realized that's a coffin. It literally I... just looks like a coffin with Axel's like weapon in it. I cannot unsee this as Axel from <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. God it's got fucking the damn it. In there. <laughs> he does. I can't unsee this shit. Next up, we have Fiend Smith Sequentia. A Link 2 Light Fiend Link monster with 1200 attack, requiring any two monsters, including at least one Light Fiend monster. During your main phase, you can fusion summon a Fiend Fusion monster from your extra deck by shuffling materials mentioned on it from your grave into the deck. You can target a non-Link Light Fiend monster you control to equip this card from your field or graveyard to it as an equip spell with the following effect. Your opponent cannot target the equipped monster with card effects. Is this just the secret plot of Kingdom Hearts? Is this what's in the box? Axel's just ran off with the box and it's really oh. this guy? Is that what's in the box? I forgot about the box! The box! Oh my god, yeah, you know what? This is it. Nomura has wormed their way into Konami. We are getting a sneak peek at Kingdom Hearts 4. Get ready, we're taking a deep dive into Quadratum right here, right now. Oh my god. Fiend Smith Tractus, a normal spell card that adds any light fiend monster from your deck to your hand, then you discard a card. You can also banish this card from your graveyard to fusion summon a Fiend Smith fusion monster from your extra deck using materials from your hand or field as material. Um, can we just take a moment to take in this artwork? <laughs> Get in there! Is he Woo! kicking someone into his coffin? He's kicking... Because he's the Fiendsmith, right? Why so is he so attractive? Because it's Yu-Gi-Oh. We gotta make our anime people attractive. Oh my god, I hate how attractive this man is. So, I, if I could take a moment to appreciate the fact that he's taking a smaller demon and putting it in the coffin as material. The coffin itself contributes to change into a different monster, so it's like he's turning one into another, but it also comes with a fusion effect, so it also alloys them together to make new monsters. I think that's really cool. Yep, I'm just thinking, it's a good thing we don't have eye tracking. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just really beneficial to me right now that we don't have eye tracking. No, because they're showing off just how much steppy energy they have right now. Steppy, and, um, steppy, look at the not, man! Not anyway, I I will reserve my barking. For, I will behave. What's the next card, Nova? Uh, the next one is Fiend Smith Sanctus. Okay, this is not sexy. Spell. Good stuff. Okay, yeah, we finally walked away from that, at least <sighs> when it comes to our... Uh, humanoid-looking people. If you're of another persuasion, you might also want to look away. Fiend Smith Sanctus is a quick play spell card. If you control no face-up monsters or all face-up monsters you control are light fiends, special summon a Fiend Smith token, which is a level 1 light fiend monster with a zero attack and defense. Also, you cannot declare direct attacks for the rest of the turn except with fiend monsters. If a face-up Fiend Smith monster you control is destroyed by your opponent's card effect while this card is in the graveyard, you can set this card. So you can use it again! Yay! I'm still thinking about the previous cards, but yay! How, how about we get you a little something else to look at with this guy, with our next card, Fiend Smith. <laughs> hey, folks, you got this one. Look at him. Yeah. Oh, oh he Fiend... looks cool in this one too. Yeah. Yeah. Check out the Fiend Smith using their giant phallic eyeball cannon with Fiend <laughs> Smith in Paradisum, a normal trap card that targets a level seven or higher light fiend monster you control to send all other cards on the field to the graveyard except that monster. If your opponent special summons a monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card to send a Fiend Smith monster from your deck to your, uh, from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard. Can I fuse with the Fiend Smith guy? Uh, I don't know. Are you a light? Are you a light fiend or a dark fiend? Dark fiend. Uh, then we were just off. It only no. takes light fiends. No. Why? How dare he? Um, I'm sure we can find like a attribute changing equipment somewhere around. We can get this to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta, we gotta make it work. I'm a dark type doggo. Yeah. I gotta okay, stay let's... true. I gotta stay true to my lore. All right, then. Yeah, we'll we'll find something to help smooth uh, massage that fusion material in there and we'll get y'all hooked up don't worry dna transplant yeah yeah dna there we surgery go. There we, we go. got it we got it we solved it we got trap cards you know cool all right yeah we have we just need a, a little bit of medical fiend. assistance and we'll be good fuck off chibi what was that What'd i'm you say? a light fiend no you're not the uh, light 
you might be eviler than your larger counterpart, if I'm being honest. That's true. You stab people far more often than I do. There is something in this uh, episode that I will stab people for. Ooh. Yeah. You, you know what we've been stabbing over, though? The new Drytron cards. They are some... People are a little upset, as it turns out. They are. Chat's burning me. Sorry, Doom, you're just not his type or attribute, I guess. And you know, you can't change these things sometimes. Sometimes. But not this time, because we've got attribute changing cards. Oh, it's true. Let's not get rid of that quitter trot. I could be good if I want to. Yeah, the uh, the new cards, let's see. They made sure the machine locked those things. Oh, yeah, they they went interesting with the new Drytron cards. Let's go from sexy to this. Dad, hey, if you're a Transformers dad, fan, that's pretty Dad! <laughs> dad it's back. Dad! It's the new Hello. daddy! <laughs> Hello everyone, it is me, your new father, Tritron <laughs> Medionis December Alpha Draconis, a, a level 12 light machine ritual monster with 5,000 attack and defense. And I'm going to quit doing that voice right now because we have a marathon ahead of us. Other <laughs> Drytron monsters you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Up to twice per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect as a quick effect, you can banish Drytron monsters from your grave whose total attack equal or exceed that monster's attack, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that monster. And if this ritual summoned card you control is destroyed by your opponent, you can special summon a ritual monster with 4,000 attack from your hand or deck, and that's treated as a proper ritual summon. <laughs> is Doom calling the Drytron Daddy or the previous card? Well, this guy has Dad in his name. It's right there on the screen. Dad! But also the other guy. Yeah, this is Dad, and that one's Daddy. Yeah, yeah this is Dad. Um, Dad is beefed up. Dad has got like 5,000 attack and defense and a pretty good effect. Dad is kind of beefy. Pretty big. Um, what's really funny about this, though, is that the 5,000 attack actually is a debuff on this. Oh. Because all the other big dry, uh, Drytron Ritual monsters, you could use two material on it. But this one, you need to use at least three. It's it's a little upsetting for um, us in the Drytron community. I don't like Drytron. Oh, well, then you'll be happy because you won't have to see this on the battlefield anytime soon. I want to hear someone be like, and I summon Drytron Meteonis December Alpha Draconids. You know, that's a fucking name. That is a mouthful. Holy that, shit. It does sound really cool. No, it sounds ridiculous. And that's what makes it cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> Next up, we have Drytron New 2, a level 1 light machine effect monster with 2,000 attack and 0 defense. It can't be normal summoned or set and must be special summoned by a card effect. You cannot ritual summon monsters to turn you activate either of these cards' effects except machine monsters. And if there's a Drytron card on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand or graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. And if this card is special summoned, you can add a Drytron monster from your deck to your hand, except Drytron New 2. Can I be real with you? When I was writing the script for this, I thought we went from dad to nuts, and I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just like, I had to take a hot minute to, like, figure out what's going on with my life. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another great episode of Drytron Explained, update number three. Today, I'm here to talk to you about some Drytron nuts. And boy, <laughs> are they busting it out there. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, I thought they put dad in a card name, and then when I read the next one as Drytron Nuts, I was like, what the fuck? And I don't think they're going to let us talk about dad's nuts on YouTube, so I'm glad <laughs> that, that wasn't the case. I'm sure I've said worse. <laughs> next up, we have Meteo Aurora Drytron, a continuous trap card. If a Drytron card becomes banished, you can tribute to a Drytron monster, then target up to two of your banished Drytron cards to add them to your hand. You can reveal a Medionis Drytron, the ritual spell of the theme, in your hand to ritual summon a machine or ritual monster from your hand or graveyard by tributing machine monsters from your hand or field whose attack equals or exceeds that monster's. Also, happy birthday, the Shadow Dinosaur. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. See, I don't know shit about Drytron other than I don't like them because they just long go, like they long combo on my ass and then have this big bungus and I just don't know how to deal with it. So why is everyone so sad? Is it the machine lock, right? Uh, that's part of it, but for like not the reason that people think they're upset about it. Um, <laughs> it's really funny because Drytron is capable of doing a lot of turn skips uh, uh, most notably, there's Amor Factor Pain, the Imagination Drake Overlord, and Chaos Max Sorcerer. 
Uh, both of those are pretty powerful turn skips, and everyone's obsessed with those, and those are not machines. So these new cards kind of lock that out, and a lot of people are saying like, oh, well, now the deck is balanced, because now if they play these cards, they don't have access to those turn skips. But if you listen to people who've been playing Drytron for a while, those strategies have been outdated for a long time. Um, it's really just that it doesn't mesh with the existing way that the cards have been tooled out. They just and the restrictions don't help. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. But there's a there's yeah. a lot coming in this set. It appears Daddy's coming. Daddy number two is coming. There's a lot of people in this set. Just a lot of nostalgia going on here, and I'm I'm happy with it. It seems That's like a solid set. I definitely will be opening and pulling for Daddy. You can guarantee I'm going to be looking. Hey, there's like three daddies in the set. Daddy Exodia, Daddy Fiendsmith, oh, yeah. and then Dad. One could argue that Exodia is the oldest dad of them all. The daddy. Oh, Dark Magician. He's that, just as old. It, 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 true, true. So they're, they've got the same like time frame going on. So if you put them head to head, who's daddier? Dark Magician or Exodia? Well, I know which one I'd let obliterate me, and it's not Exodia. Oh, uh, oh, oh! All right, okay. Mm, mm. Uh, Dark Magician, spicy, you know. Dark Magician, he just he just got that thing going on. Okay, well, I guess you and I are on opposite sides of the screen for a reason. I would, I, I would, <laughs> I would let Exodia use those chains on me. If you know what I'm saying. Oh, I forgot about the chains. Oh, that is a bonus point in uh, Exodia. Yeah. The effects of the ever so secret V Jump Ancient Gear Dragon promotional card have in fact been revealed. And Yu-Gi-Oh! players have had a mixed response, which is primarily disappointment, honestly. Uh, this card is set to release March 21st. Here's the bang, like, effect of this guy. Here's a nice little word. This is an uh, ancient gear dragon. He's a level 5 earth machine effect monster. 500 attack, 2,500 defense. Cannot be special summoned. Uh, if you control no monsters, or if all monsters you control are earth machine monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing. And when your opponent activates a spell trap co effect as a quick effect, you can send one machine monster from your hand, or face up field, or an ancient gear golem from your deck to the graveyard to negate that effect. Once more, just gonna say level 5 earth machine effect monster. 500 attack, 2,500 defense cannot be special summoned. Mm. Mm. You know, you try mm. complaining about that on Twitter and everyone's like, but that's what ancient gears do. They're not supposed to be special summoned. And then none of them will read any of the new cards that are coming out in the latest core set. It's, it's a travesty. Yeah, people are a little upset about this cannot be special summoned uh, clause of this card. Chat saying, can't they just uh, special summon the guy with other cards? Yes, uh, that is true. There are other ancient gear cards that are that ignore summoning conditions, so they can do that. This is fine for pure ancient gears, but a lot of Earth Machine fans are looking for uh, you know things to splash into their decks to help that pile out, and this one is just not what they were hoping for, myself included. They just don't want it to be special summoned, okay? They don't, they don't want it. Let yeah. me pendulum summon this. I don't no. know how, but just let me. You can. So people are a little sad about that. I wish we went back to where it just said secret and we didn't know the effects of this card. <laughs> yeah. That might have been better. Might have been the better. Fact, the fact that the card treats it as such a privilege to be normal summoned without a tribute and it has 500 attack is blowing my mind. It's a very up itself card. He's like, I'm useful. I mean, he can negate. That's true. And sending Ancient Gear Golem from deck to graveyard is no small... Uh, no small feat because a lot of our new cards are like chomping at the bit to ignore summoning conditions and summon ancient gear golem out of the graveyard but now it's dependent on your opponent activating a card that you don't even get to destroy he's trying his best he's trying his best they're a good noodle at the end of the day i'm not mad at the dragon i'm mad at the engineer i'm a, i look chat's like you could get him with ancient gearbox look there's things you could do to get him you might not be able to splash him in other decks but he's doing stuff he's doing his best stop being so mean okay you're right that's fair i'm i'm i'm, I'm being a bit too critical about him ancient gear dragon i'm glad you're a dragon we're proud of you, Ancient Gear Dragon. You're doing your best. Moving on to the next topic for the uh, OCG. This is quite cool, but I don't think any of us will be able to get a hold of it, but it's cool. Battle Nexus events prizes have been revealed. 
happening across Asian Tournament Series in 2024. Players will be able to play to win a Silent Magician cross Silent Swordsman playmat as well as Silent Magician sleeves. Yeah, let's take a moment to look at these. So we got a playmat and sleeves, but for a better look, here is the playmat. It's fucking adorable. The new versions, the zero versions of the Silent Monsters, beautiful. Mwah. No notes. So cute, so cute. We got any OCG players in chat that can get us, but damn, these, these sleeves. And, and now that we've talked about daddy, it's time for mommy. Yeah, yeah, uh, gotta have mommy are, in here too, you know? Yeah, these are very good composition on this one, aside from just the authority energy going on here. Uh, just good stuff, wonderful art. Yeah, no. love to see it. These, these look great. So any OCG players, you know, yeah, oh, I mean, that'd be cool. Do you wanna go to you know, Japan hit, and duel? Hit us up. To Japan and duel. We just talked to a company. We we're like, we'll make YouTube videos about it, and we'll duel in card games, and we won't know what's happening because I don't speak Japanese. We'll uh, we'll get like the Google Translate thing up live. We'll frantically make sure to keep up to date on stuff. We can do it. We have the tools. We we can do this. I I agree. So that's super cool <laughs> for the OCG. We've got reprint pack cards confirmed. Um, these reprint packs can be won across tournaments in Japan and feature some pretty strong cards for decks. Uh, so as we do a brief look through some of the cards you can get in this uh, include things like DD Crow, Honest, Lila Lightsworn Sorceress, Deco Talker, Heavy Storm, Lightning Vortex, Mirror Force, and many more. I'm not going to say no to a few more handy staples. And also I hear these are pretty good for other formats. I hear you were excited about these ones, Nova. Uh, I, I'm excited for them in so far as it's good that they're making packs aimed towards people who want to play older formats so that those are available. Uh, it's unfortunate that these are available only in the OCG. Hopefully this changes uh, because we're seeing a lot of movement towards things like Time Wizard formats in higher scale events like YCSs. So hopefully this is a uh, an omen of things to come. Uh, we'll see it being run in smaller venues like regionals, maybe. Well, I guess locals already do that pretty often, but there's not like official support. Stuff like this would go a long way towards uh, amping up those communities. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, it's. I think it's cool. There's dad. Who's dad? Is it Sangan? Are you on about Sangan? That's dad. That's... There's Sangan dad, Crow dad, <laughs> Storm dad, dad dad. <laughs> Honest dad, mom dad. Uh, lady. Yeah, mom dad. <laughs> mom dad. Uh, <laughs> Edge uh, lord hot dad. Topic dad. Yeah, hot topic uh, that's dad. Good. <laughs> Uh, uh, hacking the mainframe. Dad. Yeah, hacking the mainframe. <laughs> Digimon fan dad. You know, whatever you want to go with. Also, thank you for the follow. Red is indecisive. I'll come on into the Hound Pound. Yep, that's uh, that's all the OCG stuff. There's lots going on in the OCG. And that takes us over to Duel Links. Um, they're trying to skill balance Duel Links, everybody. We're having some skill changes uh, with Tachyon Dragon and Shiranui decks running a little bit rampant in Duel Links. They've introduced some skill balances to try and shake up their meta. Um, and how do I even start? El Swarm Union, Tachyon Dragon Domination, and Shiranui Style Successor will all be seeing changes to their skills. I need it known that Tachyon Dragon Domination is the most appropriately named skill in Duel Links I have ever seen. Because Tachyon Dragon has been dominating Duel Links for a long time now. Yeah. Okay. Let's hope this changes something. Let me, let me put the text on screen for explaining this guy's one. Right. So, Taki and Dragon Domination. Now, cannot normal or special summon monsters with a level outside of 4 or 8. Light dragons with 2,000 attack or less, which they previously could do for that. Or a level 8 dark dragon with 2,500 or 2,000 attack. This means cards like Ice Dragon's Prison cannot be used unless your opponent's monster meets the above condition. Uh, secondly, the skill no longer sets a level 8 dragon monster for free after searching the light dragon. And the effect to search is now once per duel yep you heard that once per duel now for that skill uh thirdly the second part of the skill requires number 107 galaxy eyes tachyon dragon specifically and then fourthly it must return a dragon type to the hand to now set tachyon transmigration slash rank up magic barriers force to your field but it can still be activated the same turn why it could do all four of these things like previously was kind of broken yeah no yeah that, that's wild it, it does feel like it's the natural end point of 
using skills to fix the holes and archetypes to make them better for a Duel Links environment, but sometimes that gets a little overtuned, and we saw that happen to great effect with the Tachyon Dragon cards. Yep, it's true. Uh, for Shiranui Style Successor, which is uh, not got a character associated with it, uh, now you can only add Shiranui monsters and not just any Shiranui card, so you can't just grab whatever you want. And in Ice Swarm mm. Union, this skill had its Ice Swarm deck building restrictions removed oh so that got buffed that one got a buff oh all right yep that one got a buff but they have hit the uh, tacky and dragon domination skill real hard it's still pretty good but it's not as insanely nuts so i don't know how well that'll shake things up i'm sure people will find something new to break yeah if the aim was to stop them from using ice dragon's prison that sounds like a pretty big hit uh even in the tcg that card can just blow out an entire board out of nowhere i have no idea how much more of an impact that has whenever your monsters are so much more impactful and valuable so that's dual links this news that's all it's got going on uh for you right now but it's a big one Hopefully it will change up things for Duel Links because Duel Links has been a little bit stuck in a rut, much like the TCG. Huh? Strange. Uh, weird that, isn't it? It's like there's almost a point where Yu-Gi-Oh broke itself. Uh, who would have thunk it? But um, with uh, Duel Links done, the TCG done, OCG done, do you know which part it is now? It's my favorite part, Nova. Uh, does it, is it start with an M and end with dice? Yeah, my daddy dice. Murder dice. I love murder dice. Murder, Wait, murder dice. dice. Oh my God. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for, this is, uh, IGN made an article about it and they're like the weirdest collab of 2024. Oh boy. From March 9th to April 9th, Yu-Gi-Oh fans in Belgium will be able to receive Hello Kitty and Friends stuffed toys themed to iconic Yu-Gi-Oh monsters. These include Obelisk the Tormentor, the Winged Dragon of Raw, Slifer the Sky Dragon, Dark Magician Girl, and Dark Magician. Karibo, Time Wizard, Blue Eyes White Dragon, Exodia, and Red Eyes Black Dragon are also available. Why just Belgium, we don't know, but if you like Happy Meals and Yu-Gi-Oh, then now's your time. So now I get to talk about my McDonald's Belgium Yu-Gi-Oh deep dive that we did today. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So I did a little deep dive. Let's just take a minute. These are cute as all hell. Look at this. I I want that. They're so. I want that obelisk penguin. The exo. I need the exodia. That one is outraged. <laughs> the obelisk penguin and the little dumb magician <laughs> kitty. Obelisk penguin. The obelisk penguin is also pretty good. Obelisk penguin. Obelisk penguin. Okay, so I started doing a bit of a deep dive into this because I saw this tweet where this uh, Dust Terry Jakawa, it was really helpful actually while I was doing this because they did reply to me and help me out with this a little bit. Um, but they were like, not that weird to be honest. And then showed this, which showed Yu-Gi-Oh and like Hello Kitty. And I was very confused. So I did a deep dive into this, okay? To work out the mm -hmm. connection because I was confused. Initially, I reverse image searched their image and found that the game was Puzzles and Dragon, which does feature Yu-Gi-Oh! and Hello Kitty within it. It's like a little bejeweled puzzle looking game. It's a gem matching game. However, this game doesn't appear to be available in the UK. Uh, apparently, it used to be available outside of Japan and America, but service for Europe, including Belgium, was shut down in 2018. So while, yes, there is a game that does happen to have Yu-Gi-Oh! and Hello Kitty in it, this game also has a lot of other stuff. It has stuff like Yo-Kai Watch, and it's just a big jumble of franchises that people like in this puzzle game, right? That's that's what that is. Um, and I'm not seeing any dragons on the screen, so there must be a heck of a lot of puzzles going on. <laughs> yeah, we were the dragons. The, yeah. the, what, the, what the fuck? So this game exists and it was confusing, but what doesn't help me solve this problem is why is it just Belgium? because this game isn't available in Belgium. They can't yeah. play this game. Like, I can't play this game. Europe can't play this game. Um, the curious thing is, I, we kept deep diving, okay? We're gonna solve this McDonald's mystery for you. We kept deep diving a little bit more. And we found some articles recently uh, from, like, in Belgium, uh, which talked about how adults were buying kids' toys more, specifically Asian, 
orientated kids toys and that that was uh -huh. a thing that was happening in Belgium at the moment. They'd noticed an increase in that behavior. So I'm wondering, could that be the answer? Why Hello Kitty and Yu-Gi-Oh? Still not really sure, but um, yeah, that's still a mystery, but that's the info I got for you. That's the deep dive I did on this. Well, good job on that investigative journalism. I, yeah. I was so lost on what was going on here the entire time so it's still pretty weird i'm gonna be honest i was like the fact the game's not available in belgium hello kitty and Yu-Gi-Oh specifically they're super cute don't get me wrong and i do want them this would make mad buck if this was in other countries so uh hey mcdonald you know if you're listening you've got your you've got your soap boxes right here ready to spread the word I I would be in Happy Meals to get myself an obelisk penguin. You love this penguin? It was from the Belgium Times newspaper. There you go. The Belgium Times said that was a thing. So that's all the info I got for you on that. Do you want to carry your cards around in style, Nova? I sure do, Doob. You How sure can I do? do that? Oh, heck yeah, Chad. What about you? Do you want to carry your cards around in style? Well, how about with this new Yu-Gi-Oh! Fanny Pack by Yee-T? It was recently added to their Yu-Gi-Oh! collection, and for just 50 bucks, you can carry your deck around your crotch. That's what fanny packs oh, do, right? They, they, they want to keep your things as close to your crotch as possible. You're lying to me, Nova! That's not how they advertise that wear this! You wear this across your chest, Nova! Oh no, I've been <laughs> fooled! I've been tricked into thinking it was a modern cod piece! <laughs> no, you will wear that on your chest. That, yeah, sure. Yeah, big air quotes on this one. Look. No, that's how they're showing you to wear it. Here it is. It says Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, it's got a little Yu-Gi-Oh tag inside it. And this is, there you go. Cool. Yu-Gi-Oh. Nice. There you go. Very fashionable. I'm being sarcastic. I would hate this. <laughs> I hate that people don't wear fat. Why stop calling them fanny packs if they are to be worn strapped across your chest? That's confusing and weird. Honestly, can we find a new name for them? I'm just all for the new name. Yeah, can we start changing from fanny packs over to bandoliers? <laughs> I want to go get a good old bandolier. $50 dues. Yeah, $50 dues. This, honestly, looks like the stuff Konami give you when you work with them at like a convention or you go to their head office and you get given some goodies for going there. This looks it, like something they would give me. It does have big swag energy. I don't even know if it does. I just, I think like that with them wearing it across the chest reminds me so much of my friend who is like the biggest card game nerd ever. Like stereotypical card game nerd. Yeah, that's like one of my friends. And I think he probably wouldn't wear this, but if any one of mine was going to wear it, that shirt's also adding to that vibe. It just reminds me of one of my friends so bad. It definitely has big Bastion Misawa energy. Oh my god, it does. It does. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, Jaden, it appears that you've changed to your evil hero strategy. One second as I swap out my specific strategy for you. Just fumbles open his blazer, gets the... Back it out. does have Bastion energy. Mm. A playmat featuring all of the signers from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds mm. has been announced for the Konami app. Set to release on the 11th of March, you can trade in 400 points to earn yourself a playmat. Doom mm. will stab you for it. Wait, no, I was supposed to read that part out loud. Um, It is a um mm. nice, neat thing that Doom mm. will admire you for having. No. Give her the keys to your house no. so that she can come and admire it personally. I... I will I will do so much if someone can get me one of these. So much. Once again, no idea how the points things work. I think we had this conversation about the mugs last week. Okay, but then they released this for the points thing, Nova. Yeah, so now it turned in, it, it turned from a mild curiosity to an immediate concern. Yeah. We need to know how to access this. How do we do the points things? I need it. It could have looked cooler. There is a Jack and you say right there. It's so perfect for me. I need it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I, I can kind of agree in so far as all of this is just reused art assets they already had lying around, but I do think they presented them really well. The composition here is stacked. It's a play mat that you can get for 400 points, but we don't understand how the point system works. So Nova's going to figure that out and DM me it so I can figure out how to get my Jack Atlas. And you say. I, I will 
burden all of you with terrible knowledge of Japan's point Konami app system. I need it though. I need it. That's true. You need it. I do. I need it. I need it. I. I, I'm getting the stabbies. I'm getting those stabby urges. I'm getting... I understand where Chibi gets it from now. Uh-oh. Are we unearthing some some energies that were sealed away long ago? Mm. <coughs> Thanks to Funko Pops Twitter, guys. We've been able to get a better look at these little Funko Pops that are slated to hit the stores later this year. Well, I don't have more information than that. Look at them. We finally get a look at them. And I just want to argue that maybe... Ojama isn't that bad. I'm really glad that they made these four really good looking pops. They're really nice. Okay, look, look. What's wrong with my Ojama guy? He just looks like he's going like, what? You know? Uh, he looks like they're trying to sell me a used car. That is Come my... on, the carburetor was just replaced last year. <laughs> I'm sure we love that for you. <laughs> what are you thinking, like six digits? <laughs> Would you buy it? I'd buy a car from Ojama Yellow. I know you would. That's part of the problem. Okay, but like, give me my Ojama Yellow. Why is Chaz 1602 and Ojama is 1600? Uh, is that an uncensored Bistinatrix? That is uncensored Bistinatrix, actually. That I guess is. they don't have to worry too much about the curves whenever everything is a square, huh? Yeah, I guess when everything's squared off, but the Harpy is still censored. So, just Bistinatrix is Oh, loved. well... I guess. Just Pristina Tricks was allowed. But Chaz looks adorable. Oja I think Ojama Yellow looks cute. Chat, do you think Ojama Yellow looks cute? I think Ojama Yellow looks cute. Chat, you know the answer to it. You have to answer truthfully. It looks cute. I think it's uh, adorable. No, okay, okay. It looking pretty cut. Yeah, exactly. I would also cut that. Cute, thing but out not purchase worthy. How dare! If I don't have one of those on my desk, am I even a Yu Gi Oh streamer anymore? <laughs> but no, Beacus I need Ojamiella. <laughs> I need Ojamiella. Yeah, so these are looking pretty fresh. I oh, but it's seductive Yami Yugi for your desk. I forgot about him. <laughs> oh, I need him. I do. I need him. Don't you need to sit down and file your tax reports? No, I did those like two weeks ago. I'm good today. Ah, all right then. I know Yami. I Tell me nothing cool things. Nothing seductive for us to do together now. Fuck. Damn, um, shit. In a dark age where assless heroes are our saviors, elemental hero Neos is here to save the day, one flat ass cheek at a time. They finally revealed the back of the uh, elemental hero Neos figure. It was supposed to be, here's the full color one, but there it is, guys. There's that uncaked ass. It's not fair. It's not fair. What did we do to deserve this? I Are we being punished for something? Did we not buy enough power of the elements? Did we not work hard enough to put heroes in top cuts at these YCSs? Is this our punishment now for succumbing to the meta sheepness that is Snake Eye? Every Snake Eye player makes Elemental Hero Neos' ass that 1% smaller. Every time you resolve Flamberg, they a little, little more air out of out of the little uh, out of the little blowhole. <laughs> Poor Neos, he is very uncakeified chat. He is a very uncakeified Neos, so we thought we should report on that. I know it's a very important moment for everyone, so we thought we thought we should report on that. And how am I are. supposed to display this on my shelf? Huh? You just what look am at I the supposed front? to tell my guests? They're just gonna come in and be like, "Well, that Neos has no ass." It's like they're gonna sense it like a seventh sense, you know? and I will never be invited to the neighborhood barbecues ever again. He's still cool, though. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, other, other than that, yeah. <laughs> Every time Previously, anyone mentions Air Neos, the forbidden card, they decrease the cake. Did you say <laughs> Air Neos? No, let the air out. No, no Neos, no! <laughs> it's like a reverse Pinocchio, but for his booty. <laughs> for speed duel news, Further inciting rumors about speed duels not being released in Europe, Konami has announced details. No, not to. Ugh. Okay, reroll that. My apologies. Let me get back <laughs> in this. For speed duel news, further inciting rumors about speed duels not being released in Europe, Konami have announced duelists who play in sanctioned speed duel tournaments at OTS stores in North America can win an exclusive Dandelion game mat. So if you're in North America, go and grab yourself one of these. 
if you are in the UK, like Doom, it's gotta suck to be you, huh? Maybe. Maybe a little bit. I'm starting to think the rumors might be true. Yeah, when you announce something like this that could have easily happened at European OTSs and just specifically only have it done for one side of the pond, I mean... I'm starting to think it might be true. We reported on it a couple of weeks back that someone had uh, gotten an email from Konami saying they weren't planning to release Speed Door GX Midterm Destruction in Europe. And now they're doing the release events for GX Midterm Destruction and it's only in America. So Curiouser and curiouser. It, the, the plot definitely thickens, eh? The plot thickens for sure. On the this. plot may thicken, but not the European stock of speed duel cards. Uh -huh. Hey, can I get a high five from chat? Hey, no. high fives, yeah. Don't you fucking high five him. Get out of here. You feel bad about that. Come on, I... Just because you can go get one and I can't, you're going to end up with a doom at your door being like, all right, there was some OTS shit I needed. I'm here. And I'll be all like, how did, how did you show up here? We are literally in the middle of recording an episode. What are you doing here? <laughs> Hello Kitty or speed duels. You only get one. I would take the speed duels, honestly. Doom's not even getting the Hello Kitty one either. Yeah, I just don't get it either. Yeah. <laughs> A bandit yeah, kid was are warning you? us. In America. <laughs> <laughs> the only city in which you can get dandelions are in America. <laughs> oh, they're in America. Our weed killers suck. So that's the news. Um... If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Just a reminder, this was recorded live on Twitch on the Tuesday, uh, so the 12th of March. So everything was in date for that. And if you're watching on the YouTube, you might be a little bit out of date because it comes out on a Friday. But hey, we need a little editing time. So, you know, you know. But we appreciate it. Leave comments, likes, and subscribe. So then always, did the subscribe box light up? Let me light up your subscribe box. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. Do it right now. You won't. No duels. And that's our show. Hey, you, you versus me, competition for the victory. victory. I can be the best one day and make history. Swing into action. Are you ready to play? Challenge anyone, anywhere, any day. You want to take a chance? Go ahead and roll the dice. See if it's in your cards, if you'll pay the price. Activate the spell, let your powers come to life. It's showtime.